Good morning, church families, and happy Easter. I'm very excited for this Easter. This is an Easter like I've never experienced before, and God's goodness has never been so evident in my, in my life and his faithfulness and his protection, and I'm really excited about today's Easter. Um, I want to let you guys know, you probably haven't seen me around for a while. I haven't seen my face on many things. Um, I have some health concerns, and uh, I need to be a little extra cautious right now. So I've been hunkering down and trying to keep our family as safe as possible. So I just want to thank you so much for all of your prayers. And so far, so good. Everybody's really healthy. Baby and I are healthy. Mom and dad are healthy. Um, kids are having fun doing doing schoolwork and stuff. So thank you so much for all your prayers. We, we really appreciate it. Um, I miss you guys. I, I need your prayers because I'm an external processing hugger. And uh, I miss talking to you guys. I miss hugging you. I miss interacting with you. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but on um, our Facebook feeds, whenever we post something online, I try to respond to as many people and talk to people through chats on our little instant messages because I miss you guys so much. So I, I love the feedback. I love connecting with you. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, entertaining me in that because I miss you guys. Uh, today, I'm really excited about our worship. I really need this worship. This is an incredible opportunity for us to be in an intimate setting in our own home with our families and really able to go deep uh, into our worship with just appreciating the goodness of our God. And uh, I'm excited for today and I just want to invite you all to do the same, to go really deep and get intimate with God. And uh, I miss you guys and I love you and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Good morning church. We are here to worship this morning. We want you to join with us. I'm going to pray and we'll get started. God, you're so good. Please anoint this set. It's Easter morning, Jesus, you've risen from the grave. What a glorious day it is. So Jesus, we're here to praise with you, our King of Kings, the King of Kings, the King of Glory. We're going to worship you this morning on this fine Easter Sunday. Worship with us, church. As I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. Cause I was breathing, but not alive. All my faith. Till I met you Cause you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day Oh, you called my name so I ran out of that grave Out of darkness to your glorious day now your mercy has saved my soul now your freedom is all that I know the old man knew I need a rescue, my sin was heavy 
chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter I was an orphan now you call me citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open oh my eyes are open Lord I need a rescue, my sin was heavy The chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter, I wasn't all So now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open so when you call my Without hope, with no place to begin, your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Sing, Ash was redeemed. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made Thank you. 
We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. No 
from the dead Jesus our living hope the king of kings who now sits on his throne with all glory with all praises and one day every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord God we're excited for that day and we look forward to it and we can be with you forever God I just pray that you would bless the message that's about to come this again great Easter morning God and we're just here for you we love you Father bless every family as they're in their home watching and uh, just let your presence be with us this morning in your name I pray Amen Good morning, Abundant Life family. We are so privileged to have you joining us this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time of worship. I hope that the Lord met you right there in your homes, uh, right where you're at. Uh, We're going to continue our worship this morning uh, with a couple things. Number one, I know that you guys have been faithful in the area of your giving, of your finances, as worship unto the Lord. Um, You know, one of the things during this time Uh, we have really been challenged on. I feel like the Lord maybe is even putting up a measuring stick uh, to our faith and our worship in regards to our finances. I know that some of you are struggling. I know that uh, some of you have lost uh, lost jobs, that uh, your employment is kind of up in the air right now, that uh, there's not a lot of money coming in, and we understand that. And just know that we are praying with all of you as you continue to pray for us, that God would continue to provide. Our faith would say that our God walks on gold. He walks on streets of gold, and so there is nothing on this earth that can come against us in this area. We just choose to continue to worship and to be faithful to the Lord as you have in your home. Uh, We've given you a number of ways to give and to continue in your worship in the area of your finances. Uh, Once again, you can text this number. Uh, You can give via our app or our website, 
Or if you would like to do a cash or check, we ask once again that you would not mail that in, but you can drop that off to our offices. We are always having someone in our office um, during the week. And so if you just want to call ahead, make sure somebody's there so that you can drop that off. Uh, we know that you'll continue to be blessed. But I want to do something this morning. If you are challenged in this area right now, if, if your faith is being challenged in the area of your finances, I want you right in your home right now, maybe you've lost a job, maybe that things are up in the air, I want you to stand up and uh, I just want to pray for you if you're challenged in this area right now. Don't be shy. Stand up. Some of you are looking around your living rooms right now. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So go ahead and stand up and I want to pray and declare some things over your life right now. Father God, I thank you that every individual under the sound of my voice, Father, is your child. God, as they've received you as their Lord and Savior, that you've called them a child. And that, that you say that when a child asks for bread, that you would not give him a stone. God, you are a good and loving Father. God, I thank you for the challenges in life that lead us to a greater level of faith. Father, for that measuring stick of faith, I pray that something would rise up within us uh, and, and just that, that, we would in, that we would boldly, Father, uh, give unto you and to be faithful in this area. God, I love you and I praise you. I thank you for provision in every single one of their lives. God, we thank you and praise you in your son's precious and holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, if that's you, just say amen. I didn't hear you. Come on, just say amen. Very good, very good. Hey, if you're visiting with us online, if you're watching this, uh, this part of our uh, service online and uh, you would like more information about who we are at Abundant Life, we'd love to connect people with other people who are kind of going the same direction. And so if you're here today joining us online and you're new, I would love for you just to, to, to comment down below. Just say, I'm new. You can put it in all caps. You can, you can do whatever you want with that. But just say that you're new and we will do our best to get in contact with you, uh, wh whether it's via your Facebook page. Um, if you want to send us uh, a message that say, and I knew, you can do that as soon as this service is over. But what we'd love for you to do is put I'm new. And then we'd love to give you one of these packets that we have for all of our visitors that come. It's got a cup in there and some popcorn and a free movie rental uh, and, and a book and uh, just some more information about our church and how you can get connected here at Abundant Life. And so during this time of social distancing, we want to be able to connect you uh, in a very creative way. So once again, I'm new means we're going we're gonna to contact you and connect with you as best we can uh, during this time. So that being said, how many of you are ready to get into the word of the Lord this morning? I know that I am. I'm excited for everything that God has been doing uh, from our neighborhood connection cards, which are still available um, to all of the different ways we're connecting online. I know that Chris is doing a lot of things with the youth on the Echo page. Jenny uh, has been doing a ton on the Shout page and the Roar page. Um, all, of those, all of those things are great ways for you to connect during this season. And so I would encourage you to do that as soon as this service is over. Uh, but we're going to get into the Word of the Lord today. Like I said, it is Resurrection Sunday, uh, one of the most exciting Sundays uh, in the history of Sundays. And uh, so we just want to get into the Word and talk about that just a little bit today. We are, this is the final week of our Life of Christ series. We've walked all the way through, through from the very beginning, the Old Testament prophecies of Jesus to His birth, uh, to His call into ministry, to the men He chose to surround Himself with. Uh, we talked about the kingdom of God that He preached. Uh, all of these sermons you can go back and watch if you'd like, or you can go back and just listen to the tidbit uh, that, that Pastor Corey posts every Monday. Uh, you can go back and just get an overview of what we were, we were talking about. But last week, uh, we, taught, we did communion together. We talked about uh, the importance of, of that and that one-week period from the triumphant entry into Jerusalem to where the crowd's heart changed because it wasn't exactly what they thought it would be. And I know that I was challenged once again looking back and watching that sermon. Sometimes I'm preaching and I don't even know what I say when I, when I go back. I'm like, oh man, that was good, and I'll type something in my notes. And so I want to encourage you to do the same. But we've walked all the way up that led us, and it's led us to this point. One of the most crucial points in our entire belief systems when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to being like Christ. And today I want, I want to talk about what that resurrection looks like in, in your life and in my life. What was the importance of it? And last week we got up to the point of the crucifixion. And if you joined us on Good Friday, Pastor Nate 
preached an incredible message of just a reminder of the price that was paid. But what was that price? What was that price? And from the very beginning, we understand that Jesus was with the Father. Even at creation, we know that Jesus was with the Father in creation. And and when sin entered the world, Jesus was not the afterthought to sin, but Jesus was the plan from the very beginning. And Jesus said, Father, I will go. Let not my will, but your will be done. We see that throughout his life, Jesus said those same things. God, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus said, I will go. I will fulfill all that you've called me to fulfill, Father. And on that Friday, on that Friday when it was darkest and it was the most bleak and when all hope for the disciples were lost, it was, it was an interesting dilemma that they were walking through. And it was Friday and Jesus was arrested in the garden as he was praying, as he was betrayed by his, one of his closest friends. It was Friday and the disciples were hiding and Peter denied even knowing the Lord and it was Friday. And on that Friday, Jesus stood before the high priest of Israel as a silent lamb before the slaughter, even as it was prophesied over him. It was Friday and Jesus was beaten. Our Savior was mocked. He was spit upon and he was chastised. It was Friday. And the Roman soldiers took the whip, this, this whip with, with strips of leather that had bones and glass in it, tearing at his flesh. It was Friday and all seemed to be lost. It was Friday. And the Son of Man stood firm as they pressed the crown of thorns upon his head. It was Friday. On that Friday, you, we saw our, saw our Savior walking, stumbling down the road to Calvary. The blood dripping from his body. We see the cross, weigh, the weight of the cross crashing down upon his ripped back as he stumbles beneath the load. It was Friday and the Roman soldiers draw, drove the nails into his hands and to his feet. And on that very same Friday, we heard our Lord and Savior cry out, Father God, forgive them for they know not what they do. A precursor to the redemptive power of the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. It's Friday. And Jesus was hanging on the cross. Bloody. Dying. And looking up to the Father. It's Friday and the sky grew dark and the earth began to tremble. And he who knew no sin became sin for you and for I. A holy God who will not abide with sin pours out all of his wrath on that perfect sacrificial lamb who cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The father turning his head away from his son. What a horrible cry. What a horrible day. It's Friday, and at the moment of Jesus' death, when Jesus poured, gave his last breath for the redemption of all mankind, the veil of the temple, the curtain of the temple that separated sinful man from a holy God was torn from top to bottom as a representation of the price that was paid. On Friday, Jesus hanging on the cross, heaven is weeping and hell is partying. But that's because it was Friday. And the plans and the purposes of a, of a virgin birth came to fruition that day as the one who knew no sin became sin for you and for me. And on that day, Jesus the Christ, the Lord of all glory, the only begotten Son of God, the only perfect man, died on that cross on Calvary. And I'm sure that all hell was rejoicing and that Satan thought that he had overcome and that he had won the victory. But surely had, he had destroyed the Son of God. He finally had everything that he wanted. He had overcome God and his plan. 
Finally, he had disproved the prophecy God had uttered in the garden and made God to be a liar. And the one who was to crush his head had been destroyed. But that was Friday. How many of you are glad that we don't live in a hopeless Friday? You see, we understand the price that was paid for our salvation, but there is so much more to this walk with God than just salvation. The goal in this life of you and I as Christians is not just to make it to heaven one day. The goal of this life is to live in Sunday. Not to stay in Friday. Not to, not to, not to dwell on Friday. But we understand that, we receive that, we receive that price that he paid that brings us, you and I, and the belief that we have brings us into salvation with the Father. But it does so much more because Friday wasn't the end. There was a Sunday. There was a Sunday, and on that Sunday at just about dawn, on the first day of the week, there was a great shaking again. There was an earthquake, but that wasn't the only thing that was shaking because now it was Sunday. And the angel of the Lord came down out of heaven and rolled the stone away from the door of the tomb. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Sunday if you can get excited about that. It's Sunday. And the angel of the Lord sitting on that stone and the guards posted it at the tomb to keep the body from disappearing were shaking in their boots. Why? Because it was Sunday and there was a promise. And the lamb that was silent before the slaughter is now the resurrected lion from the tribe of Judah. He is not here, the angel said. He is risen indeed. It's Sunday and the crucified and resurrected Christ has defeated death, has defeated hell, has defeated sin, has defeated the grave. It is Sunday and now everything is changed. I don't know about you, but that gets me a little bit excited knowing that it's Sunday. I am grateful for Friday. I thank God for Friday. I thank God every day for the price that he paid on that Friday. But I am also thankful that it was a chapter. It was not the end. The age of grace came upon the earth. This new covenant came upon the earth through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. God's grace poured out on all who would look to the crucified Lamb of Calvary, but not only to that, but this resurrection power that He released. The Bible tells us that the very same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now can dwell inside you and inside of me. And we are called to walk in that very same power as Christians. What an, what an, what an awesome source of hope and inspiration. That we do not worship a crucified king, we worship a resurrected king. Grace freely given to all who would believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross, was buried, and rose again because it's Sunday. The power of the the resurrection is the continued effect of the saving righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, Billy Graham quoted. I'm going to say that again. Billy Graham said, the power of the resurrection is the continued effect of the saving righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he did on Friday was continued on Sunday, and the power of Sunday brings life and light to what happened on Friday. But we're called to live in that resurrection power. Paul defined the essence of this message in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 when he said, we do not preach ourselves, but our Christ Jesus the Lord, crucified and resurrected again. The life of Jesus told the story from the very beginning that we talked about to the very end, just like you and I, we have our stories being written even now through our lives, through the lives that you're living now, through, through, the, through the way you present yourself to this world. You're telling a story much like Jesus told this story. He had a divine purpose, just like you have a divine purpose on this earth. And I want you to think about this, that Jesus overcame death. He overcame hell and he overcame the grave and he now is at the right hand of the Father interceding on your behalf, praying for you. His story as a human never ended. It never ended, but it changed everything. You and I, we live and we die. We have a short time on this earth. Our spirits live on in eternity in one place or another. Your spirit lives on 
You are right now sitting in your living room, an eternal being. Your spirit inside of you is an eternal being. Someone may talk about you or may write a book about you or, or, or may talk about your exploits or maybe your children and your grandchildren will continue to talk about you long after your story has ended. And the story of Jesus continues to this very day as he is the head of the church. And through his resurrection, he paved a way for you and I to be placed within that story as children of God. He made a way through his sacrifice and and through everything that he did on this earth, through his his death, and more importantly, through his resurrection, that you and I could come into relationship with the Father and could be be a a continuation of this story on earth. Being Christian means being like Christ. We represent Christ well. We are we are we are an extension of who he was and who he is. If we can learn to live in this resurrection power that he paved the way for. Because he is risen, his full name now expresses the summary of the gospel. At his birth, he is named Jesus. For he will save the people from his sins. We read that in Matthew chapter 1. In his ministry, he is Christ, the Messiah. We see in Matthew chapter 16. For he would establish this new covenant of the kingdom of God. But in his resurrection from the dead, he is declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. We read in Romans chapter 1 verse 4. This was the ultimate message for the church. He is the promised Savior. He is the crucified Christ. And he is the risen King seated in his rightful place. As the death of Christ removes the penalty of sin and declares the believer to be righteous before God, The resurrection of the Lord empowers the believer to live a transformed life. If you've been struggling, if you've been been fighting with, with the same attitudes, with the same heart, with the same negativity, with the same addictions, I encourage you right now to, in your home, say, God, I just pray that the resurrection power would rise up within me. That the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, that overcame sin and hell and death, Lord God, that that same power that you promised would dwell inside of me. See, oftentimes I think that instead of focusing on the resurrection power, which is which is the, the, the answer for all of the things that you're walking through, so many times we get so focused on what the problem is that we forget that the solution was already paid for on the cross and it is represented with a tomb that is empty. How do you receive that resurrection power? It is a gift from the Father. When you receive salvation, and if you're in your home right now, you're watching this and you've never received this, the Bible says, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father and you shall be saved. It doesn't take someone laying hands on you. It doesn't take someone grabbing you by the hand or bringing you to an altar. All it takes is a surrendered heart to Him and you can do that right now, right where you're at. I would encourage you reconnect, recommit your heart, recommit your life to God. Maybe you've been walking with God for a long time, but these attitudes are still rising up within you. You see it in your responses to people, to individuals. You see it in, your, in, in everything that you do, that there's a lack of grace in your life. Listen to me. The resurrection power in your life is, is manifest by the fruit of grace that you give not only yourself, but you give those around you. I understand people aren't perfect. Neither am I. I have been forgiven much, so I choose to forgive much. If you can walk in that grace, then I can can tell you right now, you're walking in the resurrection power of Jesus. When you see the sick, when you see the hurting, when you see the broken, what is your first response? Is Is it to shy away or is it to step into that? Because you know that you have what they need, that resurrection power. Thank God every day that I've received that. And I pray for grace to give that. I thank God every day that I've received that grace, that forgiveness. That I'm walking in the power of the resurrection. That I'm not just walking on in, in, the, in the blessing of Friday, which is the cross, which is Calvary and salvation. But I'm walking in this power of the resurrection that propels me to be like Christ. I fail. 
I fail often. I fail over and over. I fail with my family. I fail with the lost. I fail with people. But there is nothing in me that will ever stop trying to do the best that I can with the grace that He's given me. Can you honestly say today that you're doing the best that you can with the grace that He's given you? Both these aspects of Friday, the crucifixion, and of Sunday, of the resurrection, are divine works that only God can do and that He gave to you and I by His grace. That we would receive that grace. That we would walk in that grace. And I want to encourage you today. It may seem like a big thing, but I promise you, He does not call you to fail. If He says, this is what I've called you to, He does not call you to fail. He calls you in order that He could see His kingdom established. To see, and He doesn't want His kingdom to fail. Some of you are so, are, are so fearful and you're relying on yourself. Listen, stop relying on yourself and rely on the power of the resurrection because that's the power that He's given you. You can do it. You can do it. Once you get yourself out of the way and understand that it's His work, that you don't deserve it, you can't earn it, but He freely gives it nonetheless. Because He paid such a high price for the relationship that He desires with you. He paid such a high price for this power of the resurrection to be released that He would refuse to withhold it from those, from those who are His children that would ask. By Christ's crucifixion, He became our Savior. And by His resurrection, He becomes our King. He becomes our Lord. He becomes the ruler of the kingdom. Reigning and ruling victorious. Have you allowed that power into your home? Into your life? Have you released that power over your children? Have you allowed the circumstances and situations that we're walking through to overcome you? To take you away from who you're supposed to be? Or have you allowed Christ to rule and to reign by the power of His resurrection? I would like to end today's service just a little bit differently. And I want you to, right where you're at, just to quiet your heart. Maybe you need to close your eyes. Maybe there's distractions around you. I'd love for you just to focus your heart on, first of all, what He did for you on Friday. And I want us to worship for just a few more minutes together today. Nothing fancy. We don't have a full team up here or a group of individuals to lead you. But I, I just want to sing together and, and, and worship together. Not only for what he did on Friday, but then I want you to ask yourself, am I living in the power of Sunday? Am I living in this resurrection power that he's called us into? Family we can learn to do this well we can change the world I don't say that lightly if we learn to do this well you can change the world it starts in your heart it starts with your family it moves from your home to your neighborhood it moves from your neighborhood to your city to your workplaces to your schools If the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives and is available to you and I, then what does it look like? How is it manifest? So right now, we just close ourselves in to you, Father. Father, we ask for your manifest presence to rise up in our homes. Father, in this place as I'm preaching, Lord, Father, I pray that we would have a sense 
of your nearness. Father God, we thank you. We ask that you would speak to every heart right now. Father, that you would lead us, you would guide us in wisdom and grace and strength as we're walking out and doing our best to be your hands and your feet. continually be reminded of not only the price you paid for our eternity but Father the price that you paid for the victory that you've called us to walk in for the power that you've called us to walk in God I pray that today more than any other day in the history of mankind Father you would begin to release that power into our homes, into our hearts, and into our lives. Father, on our children and on our children's children, Father, we just pray for a release of your spirit. 
Spirit that would lead us, that would guide us, that would cause us to be light, to be love, and that would, that would cause us to be hope. Father God, we love you. And it is the name of Je- in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I hope you have a wonderful day today celebrating with your family the goodness of his resurrection. God bless you.